good afternoon, Thriving Therapist community. It is time for our Thriving Therapist Facebook Live at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. And I just wanted to hop on here today to um, ask you guys if you're currently doing blogging. If you haven't considered adding a blog to your website, I just want to talk today for a few minutes about why you should consider it and how to make it easy. So several years ago, I attended a writing and publishing conference for healthcare professionals at Harvard. And they talked a lot about the power of writing and the power of blogging and why it was so important that we do that if we wanted to establish our authority and expertise. But for uh, private practice owners, it's a great way to increase traffic to your website it's also a great way to establish your authority. And it's a wonderful way for clients who are interested in learning more about your practice in hearing your voice. So they get a real feeling for who you are and what you believe in and how you wanna practice by reading your blogs. So a lot of people are like, oh, I don't have time for that. I don't wanna do it. Um, it feels like too big of a job and I have to like, you know, think of something original every week, but that's not true. I can teach you a few tricks today about how to make it easy. So I would love to hear if you guys um, currently have a blog on your website and um, or if you're thinking about making one, I would love to hear that. So when I started blogging on a consistent basis, and by consistent, I mean about two to three times a month. I was not great at hitting it every single week, but I did do it for several years, about two to three times a month. and. I really enjoyed the process, but I also loved, you know, how it worked for me and for my business too, because when I was blogging consistently, I was finding that I was getting between 10 and 15 new referrals a week. And when I got to the point where I thought I can't take this many new people and my caseload was exploding, then I, I dialed back my blogging a little bit and I was focusing on other things that I was doing in my business but I did find it to be very satisfying for me, but also a great way to drive traffic. So I wanted to give you a couple tips. First of all, your blogs do not have to be long essays. They can be short paragraphs with maybe a quick tip list. It can be like a bullet list of coping strategies or um, different kinds of techniques that clients could try to do for self-care, for example, or quick tips on different kinds of things. You could also do a blog that might be a um, review of a book that you recommend or that you find to be very effective, maybe a self-help book that you think would go very well with your client population. You could also do a guest expert interview. So this is a wonderful way to do a blog with another person who has a different kind of expertise or maybe even one of your referral sources. That way you can really cross promote and get the most out of your blog because you're sharing that information with their audience and they're sharing it with your audience. And so that's a wonderful way for you to definitely cross promote and share your, um, your information. You want to be sure that your blogs are um, very relevant and you can also tie them to current events. So that's also a great way to increase um, awareness of a certain subject, but also traffic to your website. So if for example, COVID is happening, and it's still something that we're coping with, a blog about how to cope with the long-term effects of COVID would be a great topic to address right now. Think about things that you're seeing in the headlines and how does your perspective as a therapist tie into a blog that you could share with your own angle and your own expertise. You don't have to totally reinvent the wheel, but you can take a current event or a current topic that you're seeing in headlines or on Twitter or on Facebook or an article that you've read and put your own twist on it. So um, the other thing that I wanna mention is that at the end of every blog, you wanna be sure that you have a call to action. So you wanna be able to say something like, would you like to find out more about this? Feel free to reach out to me, or what are your thoughts? And you can kind of ask for engagement, or you can ask the reader to share your blog and so that you're driving even more traffic. So 
for example, if you're sending your blog out to your client newsletter list or if you're sending it out onto your social media pages, you could be asking that anyone that reads it um, might share it with someone that they might find it helpful with um, as well, the same subject. So that's a great way to also maximize your reach when you're doing blogging. So don't forget, you can keep it short, you can keep it relevant, you can do guest expert interviews, you can uh, review an article or a book that you find helpful, you can give quick tips and short bullet list, and you can also leave a call to action at the bottom of your blog and you'll be driving search engine optimization um, up for your site. You're gonna be driving traffic to yourself and you're gonna be filling your caseload and you're gonna be establishing your own voice and your own authority and expertise as well. So I hope you give it a shot because I found that blogging was a wonderful way for me to keep the phone ringing and keep my caseload full. All right, you guys, have a wonderful week. It's great to see you again. Let me know if you have any questions and I hope to read your blogs. See you soon.